Hey everyone, and welcome back to Tailboard Talk number seven. Today we're going to be talking about spiritual resilience, which is the fourth and final topic in our four-part series on resilience. My name is Alex Capiegi, and I'm a behavioral health consultant from the Department of Family Medicine at East Carolina University. And I'm happy to be here with all of you over at Greenville Fire Rescue. On today's agenda, we'll be introducing this idea of spiritual resilience, uh, which is really a potential source of coping for you all as you experience various stressors on the job. Um, we'll also be defining spirituality and religion and looking at the key distinctions between the two, how they're different. We'll also be discussing the benefits of spirituality, specifically for physical and mental health. And we'll be looking at this concept of post-traumatic growth, um, which, as you might already be thinking, sounds similar to PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And we really hope to present a new look at some of the potential benefits um, that people can experience from responding and really looking to grow after experiences of stress or adversity. So before jumping into spiritual resilience, just want to provide this reminder on just what resilience is in general. So uh, we think about resilience as the ability to withstand, recover, and grow in the face of stressors and changing demands. Also, if you'd like to learn or hear more on mental, physical, or social resilience, you can go back and take a look at Tailboard Talks number four, five, and six um, from the earlier parts of this series on resilience. But today, of course, we'll be talking about spiritual resilience. Which brings us to this question of really what is spiritual resilience? So while you may find many def definitions out there, how we will kind of conceptualize this concept today is uh, the ability to sustain one's sense of self and purpose through their beliefs, principles, morals, and values. So I thought that these quotes kind of help to um, just present this concept of spirituality as we're going to talk about it. And this first quote is by Dean Carnassus, who is an ultra marathon runner um, and also wrote a book about some of his experiences. Um, he's been highlighted quite a bit in places like ESPN and, and such, but he says that the human body has limitations, but the human spirit is boundless. And the second quote says, um, this one is by a poet, so maybe a little bit more philosophical concept here, um, but William Ellery Channing says, difficulties are meant to rouse, not discourage. The human spirit is to grow strong by conflict. And I think that both of these quotes really capture the idea of uh, spirituality as a potential source of coping and strength in the face of adversity. So before we get into our main concepts today, I want to take a few moments to just look at the differences between spirituality and religion. And I know that many people may have diverse experiences uh, with both of these. I just want to use this time to help us kind of be on the same page. But religion, we'll be talking about as a specific set of organized attitudes, beliefs, and practices. And they're usually shared by a community or group. Whereas spirituality is more of an individual practice. It refers to meaning making and seeking connection to something larger than oneself. So to, to help kind of illustrate this, we look at the analogy of football. So uh, religion, we may look at as the first example which is you know, thinking about the rules, referees, team members, yard lines that help guide uh, the game as you play. And this is similar to the way that religion might guide you to find your spirituality. But on the other hand, um, the second example talks about throwing the ball around in a park without having to play with all the rules and regulations, which can also be fun and give you fulfillment. It still expresses the essence of the game, just like spirituality or finding spirituality in other areas of life. So I hope this helps to um, maybe just clarify some of the differences that we're talking about. Now we're going to start to shift towards looking at spirituality as a source of resilience. So the quote here is taken from some research that was done uh, regarding resilience in the Air Force. 
And so you'll see some terms here that might um, relate to kind of Air Force terminology. But it says, for many people, spiritual beliefs may tremendously, one, influence their outlook on the world, two, offer solace in turbulent times, or three, provide support from a like-minded community. These beliefs may thus contribute to resilience and well-being uh, and result in improved force readiness and performance. So instead of force readiness, you may read this kind of through uh, readiness in your own jobs and positions at GFR. It's also important to point out the benefits of spirituality on health. Um, so you'll see here some things that have been found in, in different research on spirituality and health. Uh, the first one says that possessing a sense of meaning and purpose in life is strongly positively related to quality of life, um, so higher enjoyment of life. Personal religious and spiritual practices are linked to improved health and functioning, such as protective uh, or is protective against substance use. Also, spiritual meditation may help to improve pain tolerance and act as a buffer for physiological stress or uh, the, the toll of stress on the body. And also, when spiritual beliefs are used to cope with stress, it drives post-traumatic growth and improved well-being as opposed to a coping style that's more narrowly religious. So really tying in here, um, post-traumatic growth and some of the, the key benefits for health. We also recognize that this is extremely relevant for those of you working at GFR. And if you've been around for a while, you've likely heard us say this uh, many times before, but um, it's just so important that we have to keep talking about it. But the rates of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder are much higher in the first responder community. So whereas the rates of PTSD are about six to seven percent in the U.S. population for adults, um, it's closer to 45 percent for first responders. Um, so really drastically different. And we know that that's related to just higher exposure um, to traumatic events. And so we define trauma um, in our field as the threat of injury to oneself and others, threat of injury or death, also witnessing death in another person, um, witnessing critically injured patients, which we know is just such a central part of what you do, um, also uh, personally experiencing sexual trauma or witnessing violence. So all of these are kind of the criteria that we use for defining um, what a traumatic event is. And of course, for those who see these things more frequently, we're gonna see higher rates of PTSD and some of the symptoms that come along with that. So speaking of PTSD symptoms, we know that work-related distressing experiences are associated with negative physical and mental health outcomes, such as depression, anxiety, and PTSD which is highly prevalent in the first responder community after going through a traumatic event. And uh, we know that also a lot of physical health issues are related to PTSD as well, including things like high blood pressure, um, heart attack, and stroke. However, exposure to work-related traumatic incidents in first responders could also result in positive psychological changes such as post-traumatic growth. And so that's where we're really gonna land the rest of our time uh, looking at is this concept of post-traumatic growth and how it could be beneficial to you all as a potential source of coping. So post-traumatic growth um, is pretty simply the experience of personal growth after a difficult life event. So here's some examples just to give you an idea of how this could look in your own life. Um, but a newfound clarity on what is important in life, a greater appreciation for others, increased closeness with others, bolstered confidence in one's ability to handle challenges, and a strengthened religious faith or practice. So here we've laid out the 10 item short form of the post-traumatic growth inventory by Tedeschi and Calhoun, uh, which was created back in 1996. And what I'd like you to do is as I walk through each of the 10 questions to really think back about an experience, uh, perhaps, an experience that stands out to you most since you've been on the job, uh, maybe most jarring, or maybe um, from time to time again, you find yourself dwelling on it, 
we're feeling stressed um, about it. And as I go through, think about maybe to the degree that you've experienced um, some of these things related to that event. And I would even encourage you, you know, if you have a uh, pen and paper, to write down the numbers of your responses here, because we'll add them up at the end, or maybe even just jot some notes down um, on your phone. But let, let's kind of jump in here. So number one says, I changed my priorities about what is important in life. So in response to this, this jarring event, I changed my priorities about what is important in life. And your response options are there on the right-hand side. So whether you experienced uh, no change or a very small, small, moderate, great, or very great uh, degree of change. Number two says, I have a greater appreciation for the value of my own life. So again, think, away, think about the ways that maybe this experience could have impacted you. Moving on to number three, who says, I am able to do better things with my life. Give me some time just to think about that. Uh, number four says, I have a better understanding of spiritual matters. So perhaps as a result of this event, maybe some, some additional contemplation of um, purpose or life and death, that sort of thing. Number five says, I have a greater sense of closeness with others. Six, I established a new path for my life. So maybe some um, reconsiderations about life or, or your direction because of this experience. And I would, I would invite you to go ahead and pause the video um, if there's any of these items that maybe you're not sure or you want to think a little bit longer on it. Um, don't feel rushed as we kind of go through this. Seven says, I know better that I can handle difficulties. And eight, I have a stronger religious faith. Finally, that brings us to the last two. Um, nine says, I discovered that I'm stronger than I thought I was. Which again, sounds a lot like resilience, um, just as an overall concept. And 10 says, I learned a great deal about how wonderful people are. So maybe a deeper appreciation for humanity or others. And again, hopefully at this point you've been jotting down your responses. Uh, maybe you've paused and, and kind of allowed yourself some time to reflect on this. But what I would ask you to do is go ahead and, and add up your total score. So out of 50, uh, where do your experiences, again, around a, a stressful event, um, and I don't want to assume that everyone's had uh, an event like this, but uh, certainly if you have had an event like this, this may be more impactful for you. But um, looking at your total score, just in general, lower scores might indicate that um, this area of post-traumatic growth isn't really something that you've thought about or maybe explored yet, which is absolutely fine. And higher scores might indicate that this, this is something you have given some more thought. So maybe you, um, the concepts that we're talking about today might not be new to you. Maybe it's already things that you've learned and grown through. So to wrap up our discussion today, uh, I'm just going to give a, a quick overview or touch briefly on each of the five domains of post-traumatic growth, which are personal strengths, greater appreciation for life, spiritual development, closer relationships, and new possibilities. So if you're looking for some action steps or ways that you could uh, maybe start to utilize some of these skills or strategies we're talking about today. The first one says, possibly reflect on the ways that your personal strengths have been demonstrated through adversity and on the job, of course, and in your personal life. And the outcome or potential outcome could be greater confidence to handle life's challenges. Second domain is a greater appreciation for life. So perhaps an action step is to reconsider your assumptions about the world 
and a potential outcome could be a deeper value of life and recognition of the importance of little things. Third domain is spiritual development. And again, this may or may not be related to a specific religious set of beliefs or practices, but an action step could be to contemplate existential questions about death and the purpose of life. And an outcome could look like a greater sense of understanding about the world and one's place in it. Number four is closer relationships. So an action step could be to seek out connection and social support and an outcome could include greater acceptance about the importance of leaning or relying on others. And finally, number five is new possibilities. So an action step could be to develop an acceptance of the past by adjusting your goals for the future. And a possible outcome is openness to new opportunities. So again, this is a review of the five domains of spiritual resilience, um, which can help just give you some concrete steps for ways to apply spiritual resilience into your own life as a style of coping. And that brings us to the end of today's uh, topic on spiritual resilience, wrapping up our four part series on resilience. I just wanna use this time to say thank you so much for your attention and for your commitment to serving our community. Uh, I hope that today was engaging. I hope you found yourself following along and participating and I hope it's beneficial to you and the work that you do here in our community.